The other thing too, we went there one one time, one tour we were doing, we were touring with Fleetwood, this band called Fleetwood Mac, who weren't Fleetwood Mac. There was this Clive Davis or whatever his bloody name was, he had all sorts of people out with Fleetwood Mac who were not Fleetwood Mac. We toured a lot with Fleetwood Mac. And I remember I was doing a lot of that mouthy Jack the Lad stuff at the audience at the time, shouting at them basically, which people weren't used to then and it's made them at least pay attention somewhat and you know, a lot of people said sod him and a lot of people went, yeah. And we went on this band started mimicking what we'd done, shouting and thinking it was funny. I'm going to kill you if I got a chance. And there was another band going around that were doing basically status quo, and they were called Fog Hat. And they'd, all, they'd been there a while, these guys, and done the same as ZZ, and they put us on a tour with ZZ. We were all got English, you know. Who's bloody said said then? I don't get that. And um, really liked those guys. They were really good to us. And, and um, them and... Bob Seger band. Oh, fucking great. And um, maybe I shouldn't be saying this, but they they would uh, the ZZs would do one they, if there was more. So if it's the five thousand seats, only five thousand people in tonight. They come out in the baseball caps and jeans and shit. So fine. But if it was more than that, they come out in a rhinestone. Hey, who's the other fucking been? What the damn it? And um, shouldn't do this, but you can chop it. We um, we did a sound check somewhere, and I walked backstage, and this guy said hi. Hi. Are you sure? Oh, you suck. Oh, dear me. Lots of S's, you know what I mean? And he said, you guys should come play with us in Texas and all that. I'm not, I don't know which one it was. But it was such a shock to me that, oh, you know, because for some reason, this, it's all testicles and macho, isn't it? <laughs> so I don't know who it was, but I remember thinking that at the time, and what a lovely bunch of guys. And we never did do that, and... Um, We've worked together once or twice ever since. But I don't know what it was in America. Mainly, whatever excuse we make, it was us. We didn't. We were like a little bit like sport children. and No. So we didn't go. Dumb. But that, I told you I wasn't educated. Backtracking a bit. Um, there's, the, there's the psychedelic stuff. There's the ice in the sun, pictures of matchstick men. And then something that obviously in this day and age you never get ever get away with is that from, I suppose from a punter's point of view and certainly looking at, back at the old music press you do seem to almost vanish for 12 months and then reappear with the faded denims and what was kind of going on in that period where the... Probably fuck all. Because um, it's, it's, once you're off that radar it's difficult to get arrested. But there was that period we were we knew we could get three to four hundred pounds that was the top going for the so-called top bands. I think the, the who at the time probably got 600 quid in England and uh, we'd just be trying to get work and we could get two and a half to three hundred or we could go and work this circuit which was the welcoming it was the uh, the castle in two in all these the winning post and all that and there's a circuit you could go and do them we were lucky if you got a five had a bloke that played us what we did with Meet the Hoop Ball. He's just sort of long haired guy. Everyone's long haired, I suppose. Isn't he? But he liked us, you see. And he put us on. We did really well. Because most times people would What the fuck are they doing on here? They ask him straight, What the fuck are that lot doing here then? And you'd see him, they'd be sitting there going, Hmm. If you think we're going to listen to you, pop merchants, you know. Taking out of their tree, so this will do us, and that was great challenge for us to get them to move. So anyway, we went down a little, little, and uh, what was the question? Just about literally your the, 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 the transition, yeah. Oh, yeah. And uh, we had to, we got to work that circuit and get really. And I remember Colin Johnson saying, "This guy what?" He went, "Well, can I? Can you give us some?" He said, "Not yet." He said, "No, I couldn't put me in my other club. They're far too uncalled for that yet." And it's slow. That's where it slowly came about that we'd we'd started wearing the denim. Dumb was telling us off because we weren't playing the top rank or the mecca circuit. That was the places. That was the two main circuits in England and the uni circuit. And uh, we were just so pleased that no one was telling us. So we worked all these backs of pubs and got a fiver. And every now and again, we'd have to get one of the other gigs. And I'm not sure if we actually put the nice clothes back on for one or two of them to get the money in. But eventually it got to this point, we were proud of the mess we were in. We had the stinky clothes a lot when I think about it. You'd wear these denims and these pumps and they would get soaked in these venues. 
Uh, if you've got a hotel, you just stick them on a radiator. God knows what happened in the summer. You stick them on a radiator and put them back in your bag and put them on the following night. And we'd get up to each other on geeks and get, Jesus Christ, the yonks. <laughs> and they, they still want to rip straps, and the leather straps. And when you know, you, the more you, it goes in the strap, good God, when they get warm. And I know Lancaster used to have this particular strap that don't get near him in the first few minutes till it's actually warmed up and got past its period of poor oh, honks. So all oh, that was part of that to us that we're proud that we stunk. Stupid ass. <laughs>